Hello friends, hope you are having a wonderful day. I am Divyan Chakravani and you are watching Knowledge Overflow. Yes, you see your name got changed. So we are now more hungrier for knowledge. In this video, we will be talking about another data science course that is offered by the University of Regina, which is situated in Canada. So Regina is a district situated in the Saskatchewan province of Canada, which is more of like a Punjab ke khet wala vibe that we give you. And if you are into data science course and want to study in Canada, this is one such course that you can target. In this video, we will be talking about the course's eligibility criteria, how to apply international equivalencies, application fees, total tuition fees, scholarships, everything about this course. So stay tuned to the last of this video to know everything about this particular course. And if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. I keep coming with the data science courses, but you guys don't just follow me, right? You just don't subscribe me. I'm very hard. So jokes apart. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and do share with your friends who are looking out for data science courses around the globe. This course goes by the name of MSc in Computer Science with Data Science. So this is a new course that they have started in 2021 itself. As for this course, this is offered by the Faculty of Graduate Studies. So all the applications will go through them only. As for the admissions, this is a project based course, not a thesis based course. So you don't need to write a thesis. And of course, you don't need to find a supervisor as in the case of other course. Like for suppose you say you are going for a normal computer science course for this particular university, you will have to find a supervisor for your own self because this is a, it is a thesis based course. But this course is not a thesis based course and a supervisor will be assigned to you once you get admitted to this particular university. As for the application deadlines, the applications are right now open for the next intake and this program is only offered for the fall semester. So you need to make sure that you confirm to the deadlines and the applications are currently open and it will run on till March of 15th, 2022. So they have given a very long time for you to fill in the application and you can go just apply anytime you want. You can prepare your documents. They have given a long time to prepare the documents as well. As for the results part, you will not get results on a rolling basis. Like suppose say you apply today and you will get a result maybe like two weeks or three weeks down the line. No, that's not like that. They will collect all the applications till March of 15th. And then after collating all those applications, they will scrutinize all these applications and then finally will come up with a decision on acceptance or if you are rejected. For the grades, you need to have 70% if you are looking out for any computer science courses and 75% in CS. So CS related subjects, if you have all the CS related subjects, you need to maintain a 75% of average. This is a bit high in terms of what I have seen in the previous courses. And there should be 10 computer science courses with at least one computing theory course, two software courses, two systems courses and two applications courses. So they have a very, very rigid requirement that is going on right now. So these are the minimum requirement that doesn't guarantee so like suppose say you have studied all these subjects that doesn't guarantee you an admission at University of Regina. Rather, it's a minimum requirement. You have to complete it in order to take part into the MSc computer science program. And they have explicitly written that we require a four year bachelor's degree with broad range of senior undergraduate courses in computer science. So I don't think that uh, the three year courses will be eligible for that. They have explicitly written that they need a four year bachelor's degree. And uh, as for GRE is concerned, so GRE is required for other graduate courses, but not for the computer science courses. So they have explicitly written that if you are going to apply to any graduate course in University of Regina, you will have to provide a result of GRE. But if you are going for a computer science course, you don't need a GRE. GRE is not required for computer science course, irrespective of you are going to human centered computing, data science, normal computer science, anything. You don't need to give the GRE. And for the English language proficiency, there are a few caveats that I will be discussing like any other universities. I will be explaining it in a while. As for the data science course, let's just move on to their main page. So this is the data science page, MSc Computer Data Science. And for this course, you have to complete 30 credits on, in a span of five terms. So there will be five terms in two years. You have to complete 30 credits in that. You don't have this flexibility to choose what you have to study. So they have a very rigid coursework going on here. Maybe just because they have started new. So maybe in the future they inculcate some more electives in the course. But for now the coursework is really rigid. These are the courses that you have to study. The course codes are given. And if we talk about the breakout for each semester, you will be studying two courses each semester for four semesters. 
and which are software development fundamentals, Python and data fundamentals in the first semester. Second semester, we'll be studying foundations of data science and foundation of statistics and machine learning. Kind of interesting subject I see, statistics and machine learning combined. Third semester, you will be studying applied machine learning and big data analytics and cloud computing. Fourth semester, you will be studying advanced data science and machine learning and communication in data science. Basically, a visualization subject I see. And the fifth semester will be your data science seminar and project. There will be a capstone project uh, for six credits. So this is one heavy course that you have to complete in the last semester. That's all. And there we go with a detailed, uh, detailed explanation of each and every course. I'm not going to go into that. You can have a read on it if you like. Uh, if you talk about the eligibility criteria, the basic minimum eligibility is you have to have an online application. You have to fill in an online application. You need to give the transcripts. You need to give the references, resume and letter of intent, test scores if required, like GRE is not required for you. English I'll be telling about in a while. So the first thing you have to check the application deadline. This is already check marked. Find out the admission requirements. I'm telling you right now. So admission requirements are also done. On the way look at the tuition estimate i will be telling this about this as well you need to stay tuned to know about the tuition estimate because they have a very very complicated tuition structure so you need to have a brief view on that as well or plagiarism so while writing resume sop make sure you don't plagiarize so plagiarism is something that they take very seriously and it will just be chopped off from the list of all the applications if they found any of the plagiarized content as for the applicants from china there is some specific point you can have a read of this you can pause this video here and have a read if you are watching this video in this page there is some things that i wanted to share as well there's this exemption list so you have three points here so if you fit in any of the three points you are in the exemption for english language proficiency so first goes if you have completed post-secondary education at a canadian institute or university already or you have completed post-secondary education at a university at which english is listed as the only language on the world higher education database so whed i also told about this in another video you can check it out so this is the database that most of the universities look out for if they give the ex exemption to the English language. The third point is you have completed post-secondary education at a university where English was the primary language of instruction as indicated. And another point I wanted to show was the English language requirements. Suppose you don't fit into any of the exemption list. What you have to do is you have to give the proof of your English language proficiency. For that, they take a lot of tests. So there are a lot of tests that they accept right now. CAEL, Cambridge, TOEFL, IBT, IELTS, PTE, CANTEST, MELEB, TOEFL paper, DNU. Duolingo scores are accepted on a temporary basis as for the 2021 academic year. So it will be accepted till May 1 and April 30th, 2022. So suppose you are going for next year, there is a chance that you can go for the Duolingo test. They can accept the Duolingo test. For us, you need to have a minimum of 70 in CAEL. If you are giving CAEL, uh, TOEFL, IBT, you need to have an 86 overall and 20 in each band, respectively. IELTS, you need to have a 6.5 overall with 6 in each of the section. PT, you need to have 63 with 59 in subsections. Can test, you need to have 4.5 and 4.5 in each. Me lab, you need to have 85 and Duolingo 110 is accepted. So these are the scores that uh, they accept. If you move on to the application procedures, so uh, what you have to do is, first of all, you need to complete the requirements. First of all, you need to collate all the documents that you have to uh, submit. And then you need to apply online. Transcripts, make sure you have all the transcripts while you are applying. And minimum of two reference letters are to be provided irrespective of their academic or employers. Then you need a resume and a letter of intent outlining one's purpose in applying in graduate studies. Fee, so application fee is 100 Canadian dollars for this particular course. And if we convert it to Indian rupees as of the current rate, it would correspond to 5,878 rupees, Indian rupees. And finally, you have to submit a test score if you have any, if you are lying into any of the test categories. So these are the things that you have to complete in an online application form. And then your application will be complete to the University of Regina. 
and then if we talk about the online application process so they say that it takes about 30 minutes to complete and at the first time you will be asked to create a login id and a pin basically a password you will be making an account on their portal and then you can choose to finish later and before you fill out the application you need to have the following things ready personal information education history of all the post-secondary institutions attended so if you have any bachelor's master's whatever you have you need to have the documents of this ready english language proficiency test if applicable and names and email address of your references so all you have to do is to provide the name and email address of the references not the letters itself they will be asking them separately on their own and and then you have to complete the letter of intent you need to have the letter of intent also they have given a link that we can refer to so this is the link that they have given for you to refer on most common mistakes applicants make so you can have a look at it it might be very useful for you i haven't had a look but you can always check resume or cv you need to have valid credit card this is something uh, new in the requirement but anyway this is required in any of the application because we have to pay the application fees but they have told you beforehand that you need to have a valid card as well uh, for paying the application fees and an invalid email address of course you need to have once you have completed all the sections of the application and have verified that you have entered the information correctly you have to pay the fees and once the fees application fees is paid uh, you will your application is complete and it is sent to university of regina and for payment you can use mastercard visa or american express whatever suits you this is the apply now page you can refer to it and i will share this link as well in the video description now if we go to the fees which i told you is a bit of a complex thing here so as i told that there will be two fall semesters two winter semesters and a summer semester so here the fees is divided into the semester so you have to pay the fees each semester as for our course for international students what you have to pay is in the fall semester you have to pay a total of 9446.4 canadian dollars if we take two fall semesters as according to the fall 2021 uh, semester because the fee changes every semester and uh, for winter semester it would be 9009.4 canadian dollars and for summer semesters the summer fees is not given because exactly because this course is not being offered uh, so far and the summer 2020 semester there was no master of data science course included so in that so for the summer summer semester the estimated the expected price would be 4500 canadian dollars and if we add them all it will total out to 22955 canadian dollars and then if we convert it into indian rupees that would correspond to 13.5 lakh indian rupees and see two years courses you are able to study it in 13.5 lakhs and that too in canada so this is the most pocket friendly course i have ever seen in canada I have never seen a full-time two-year master's course with such a low fees. You can definitely check this out. And this is why I told you to stick to the last of this video because this is one huge surprise. 14 lakhs, less than 14 lakhs is all it takes for you to get a data science degree from Canada. And University of Regina is a publicly funded institute. It is one of the top-notch institutes in Canada yet it feels like this is too much to pay for you can go for the financial aids so there are some scholarships in terms of graduate teaching assistantships and uh, research assistantships uh, this is the scholarship space this scholarship is not for you this is for the canadian students or permanent residents who are looking out for this course this is not for you guys and teaching fellowship is also there teaching fellowship graduate study scholarship and uh, then you have graduate teaching assistantship graduate research award is again not for you guys because this is based for the thesis based courses and not for you so a data science course is not a thesis based course it's a project based course not for you guys departmental teaching assistantship is also there so you have to complete a 6 to 15 hours of uh, marking so teaching assistantship is something like uh, suppose say teacher takes a test for undergraduate students and uh, they fill in their papers so you need to mark those papers you need to correct those papers so these kind of things i mean teaching assistantship consists of so travel scholarships uh, is something again that would not be very much useful to you because this is in case you have you are traveling 
for research or to present research results so this is where you will be refunded reimbursed for uh, in terms of travel so these are the main things that you can use you know so departmental teaching assistantship you can look out for graduate teaching assistantship you can look out for graduate study scholarships you can look out for so these are the things that you can look out for otherwise there are a lack of you know, scholarships in terms of international students so these were the scholarships that i could find for you guys and that was all about this particular course i hope you liked this video and if you liked it please subscribe to the channel i have been doing a lot of hard work please do a hard work on your end as well please hit that button that's the all hard work i want from you guys and do share it with your friends who are looking out for data science course don't be so mean don't be so rude please share it with your friends who are looking out for data science courses it will be helpful for them as well it will save some time for them as well i'll keep coming with some more cool data science courses around the world until next video or wa